Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the session on machine learning. This is the last technical session of the series this year. My name is Marc Bourgeois and I work at the Eurocontrol Experimental Center, where I work on exploratory research. Today in this session, we will have a further two papers. And the first one will be by Manuel Mateos. Manuel is an aerospace engineer graduated from University Polytechnical University of Madrid and has been working on big data and machine learning for the last two years, while in parallel doing his PhD. His PhD is funded from Engage, from the SGU, and if you want to know more about that, at the closing session, Engage will give you more information. Engage is the network that binds together the different projects in exploratory research and that also funds the next generation of researchers. Before working on machine learning, Manuel worked for four or five years in the GNSS area. And his presentation today will be about predicting requested flight level with machine learning. I hand over to Manuel. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you, Mark. And I will share my screen. Hello, uh, my, my name is uh, Manuel Mateos, and as uh, Mark said, uh, I'm an aviation analyst in Normal, and also um, I'm PhD, uh, I'm engaged PhD student, uh, supervised by the by the Polytechnic University of Catalonia. Um, my PhD is related uh, trajectory prediction using machine learning, and today uh, we are going to talk about a very spe specific problem um, inside this PhD study, which is the, the prediction of the re request flight levels with uh, machine learning. So we are going to make a quick introduction uh, of the of the problem. Uh, we are going to to review the the machine learning techniques and models uh, used for this requested flight level prediction. And I'm going to to present also some some experiments and results and share with you the the main conclusion up to date. So. Uh, First of all, uh, nowadays the, the network manager uh, needs uh, the flight plans uh, from airlines uh, prior to the day of operation, where airlines uh, have not uh, filed yet this, uh, this information. And these flight plans are basically composed by the 2D route and the requested flight, flight level. So um, as the network manager do not have this information, they basically take the take it from the uh, from the last week yes so um, we think and um, the network manager agree, agrees with with us that there is some discontinuity uh, particularly in the in the pretactical phase so uh, one one day before before operation so the um, the demand forecast is not as accurate as as it could be um, the benefits here are quite clear because with a better forecast, the allocation of the resources could be better. And so uh, we will have fewer regulation on the day of operation, which means less delay for the, for the airlines. The challenge here is that um, usually uh, the models predicting this requested flight level uh, requested from the, from the Airlines uh, is based on the on the optimal requested flight level, so uh, it requires sensitive information uh, that airlines are are not willing to share, such as the um, takeoff weight, the cost index, etc. So uh, we are tr we are trying to um, address this problem using using machine learning. Why the the requested flight level in particular? Um, First of all, because it has been seldom specifically addressed, and in comparison, for example, with the with trajectory route prediction, which are uh, which there are um, topics that have received much more attention, and the accurate forecast of the of the vertical profile is is key for the demand and capacity balance, especially in those zones 
uh, which admit vertical uh, sector divisions, which are usually the, the um, areas where the, the traffic is, is heavier. So it's more important if, if we can say. And lastly, uh, we think that it, um, these um, accurate predictions are going to, to play a key role in the, in the next steps in the SSR pipeline, such as the trajectory business operations and so on. So uh, we are going to, to make a quick review of the, a quick overview of the, of the problem. Uh, first of all, uh, we uh, we looked and uh, to the um, to the um, requested flight level to the the thing that we are uh, we wanted to to predict the re requested flight level is uh, a numeric but discrete value as uh, our our traffic management impose uh, some rules about the the flight levels that can be that can be flown. Um, an aircraft cannot fly any fly level they they want, so um, is is discrete, but it's also is also a number. So it could be um, the problem could be tackled in principle, but using regression or classification model. And the main problem with regression models is that um, um, on top of the on top of the regression the regression for this case uh, you will need a, a post processing in order to um, assigned um, a continuous value to to a discrete uh, to a discrete flight level, which are the, the possible ones, um, which introduce a, an error, or, of course. Um, about the classification models, uh, are usually better for uh, for machine learning, um, but uh, only when the the number of classes is, is not too high. Otherwise, it's better to use regression models. In this case, we made an analysis. You can see it in the in the picture of the number of, of different request of flight level um, um, across the all, all network. Um, you can see the, the number of OD pairs compared to the to the number of request of flight level requested in in that particular pairs. So uh, as we see, it is not uh, it's not very high. The number of uh, of OD pairs where more than 15 different requested flight level are, are filed, it's, it's really low. So uh, therefore, we, we decided to go with um, a su uh, supervised classification. In particular, uh, we tried some different algorithms, and the random forest was the, the one that behaves uh, the best. So we, we were going with, uh, with random forest classifier. This is the uh, the basic overview of the of the problem. We have the the historic uh, requested flight level. Uh, we assign some features to the to this historic of uh, requested flight level, um, such as the aircraft uh, maximum takeoff weight, the scheduled properties, weather data, etc. Um, with all this information, we train a machine learning model, and once uh, this machine learning model is is tr properly trained. We, uh, we use uh, the, the validation set that has not been seen by the model. Uh, we assign all these properties the same way, and uh, we make a, a prediction of the, of the requested flight level. With this uh, forecast, uh, we compare with, uh, with, with the requested flight level, and we obtain a, some validation results that we, we will see later. About the, um, the machine learning models, uh, we have developed uh, two different models, um, taking an, an, iter an iterative approach, uh, considering the, the features. Um, at first, we develop a basic model, uh, which just take into account the aerospace user, the day of the week, the hour, the day of the year, and the aircraft mast, not the actual aircraft mass, uh, only the maximum take of weight for this particular aircraft. And, and on, top of, on top of this model, we develop the enhanced model, which takes all the, um, all the variables from the basic models. And additionally, uh, we take the, the along wind uh, along, the, along the trajectory. 
um, the um, uh, sort of um, convective phenomena probability using some proxies such as the the K index, the, uh, the humidity and the convective available potential energy. Um, we also uh, use the, uh, the past regulation as a proxy of the expected uh, congestion levels. And we, um, we use the local wind uh, at the airports uh, as a proxy also of the, of the airport runway. To check if the, these models behave uh, correctly, uh, we are, we bench, uh, to do so we benchmark them with the current with the current tool used by the network manager, which is the the predict. As we don't do not have access directly to the to this tool, we made an in-house implementation with the information available and the and the collaboration also with the with the network manager to to validate our, our hypothesis and. Uh, this in-house predict uh, follows the, the following approach. It looks for the for flights with the same uh, call sign, but uh, occur in the previous week. If it's not possible, uh, we um, obviate the, the same uh, call sign. We uh, look for a, a closer in, a, the closest uh, flight in time from the previous week also. If, if either no, no previous flight uh, from the company is available, we look for another company. And if not, we just take uh, the, the closest uh, flight plan uh, from, from the same repair. So uh, some, some experiments. Uh, first of all, uh, the, the data we, we had used for these for these experiments, there is uh, the flight data from Eurocontrol Demands Data Repository (DDR). Uh, we have used data for, uh, for all year 2018, IRAX from 1801 to 1813. And the first 48 weeks were used for the training, and the last four were used for the for the validation. Uh, um, some basic hypothesis for the um, for the evaluation. Uh, we create separate model for each OD pair. All all flight uh, all um, a flight is considered correct when requested flight level matches with the with the data. And uh, for each uh, OD pair, the the accuracy and and the um, the accuracy is the number of correct, correct guesses divided by the number of total guesses, uh, and so for to uh, is the same to for the global results. Uh, we just take all the uh, all the guesses and divide it by the total guesses, taking into account all the all the pairs considered. For the basic model experiment, uh, we were we managed to uh, to extend it to the to the full CAC area. Um, in total, it, uh, it was like 14,465 uh, 14, OD pairs, from which about 75% result in a, in a machine learning model. Um, the, the other ones uh, could not uh, uh, generate a machine learning model either because uh, they have uh, very few Flights in the in those OD pairs, or be, because they have only one requested flight level, so it makes no sense to to make a machine learning model out of this. Uh, from these pairs, um, more than sixty percent show uh, better performance than, than predict. In the contrary, thirty percent uh, provide worse results, and about ten percent uh, show just uh, the same the same results. In global terms. Um, I, and the accuracy increased about 3.2 percent. And uh, as we're going to say, uh, as we're going to see, uh, we think we can um, increase the the performance of, of the system up to 8 percent. Um, because as we as we see in here, uh, this this graphic uh, shows the um, the machine learning accuracy against the um, 
so-called predict accuracy, the, this in-house predict accuracy. Each point represents uh, uh, the results for each OD pair and the size of the, um, of the, of the circle or, uh, is the, um, represents the number of flights in, in each OD pair. Blue is uh, better, red is worse, and green is, is the same. Um, and as we can see here, it is, there is, it is clear that it, there is much more uh, values um, um, that um, are colored in, in blue, but the, the worst thing about the, the red ones is that they are quite spread. So there's some cases for, for which um, machine learning prediction is um, much worse than, than predict. So, uh, we have some ideas, uh, maybe in the future, this, um, this behavior could be detected prior to the, to the predictions. And so, for example, use the, use the predict instead and, and increase even more the, the global results. And for the enhanced uh, model experiment, um, the, um, we were not uh, able to extend it to the full ECAC area. And so we, uh, uh, because it's still under development, so it's, it has only been tested for a, a small su subset of OD pairs. Uh, you can see it here. Uh, we, we have made these uh, seven OD pairs and the, the, the opposite ones. Um, as we are were um, including a lot of new features in the in the model, um, the, we had to use a recursive feature elimination in order to maintain a good ratio of uh, number of features and number of, uh, of data points. Um, so, and in average, uh, we get about seven percent increase uh, of accuracy with respect to to predict again. Indeed, recursive, uh, uh, recursive feature elimination is uh, also so uh, some interesting points, uh, as we can see here in the in the table, that where you can see the the selected um, type of variables uh, for which OE pair. As we can see, the the different uh, the variables are quite different uh, for each uh, for each OE pair. Um, local wind, uh, as we see, it is quite seems quite relevant. Uh, in, in, spe in special, the, the destination airport seems to determine quite a bit the, the behavior. Also, convec convective events are quite important. In special, k index is the, the most like uh, the most selective uh, feature and. On root wind is also important, but uh, not not in a, not in every pair. It's more important in, in some particular or in destination pairs, and and probably the, the most interesting thing is that uh, the regulation based variables uh, are appear to to be less relevant and seldom to to be selected for, uh, in the model. So um, to conclude. Um, we uh, construct a machine learning model uh, that outperforms a uh, current solution with a 3% uh, increase in the basic model and 7% in the enhanced model. And we foresee some next steps. Uh, first of all, to explore the magnitude of the error, the, the distance between the, the forecast of requested flight level and the actual requested flight level and the impact uh, which this has in, indeed in the, in the demand. We want also to investigate the applicability of the enhanced model to the, to the entire world network as their results are so promising. We want to, to explore some other new features that may have impact in the, in the model, such as the crosswind, the proximity to a severe wear event, etc. Um, we want also to, to select, uh, uh, to develop an automatic algorithm selection for, for each OD pair. So, for example, it makes no sense to use the enhanced model, so it select the basic and so. Um, but also ex explore the, um, the possibility to, to incorporate several OD pairs into a single model. 
And uh, finally, we want to integrate these results with some previous work that uh, we have done on, on root prediction and evaluate the demand and capacity balance. So this, this was all from my side. If you have any question, I'll be very happy to answer them. Thank you very much, very much Manuel. Uh, we have two questions coming in. So I ask everybody to put the questions in the questions and answers panel and not in the chat. And I would like to take the first one first, which goes back to your graph with the red and the blue and the green dots. Is it possible to project that again? Yes, yeah, sure. In fact, it, it is a, not so much a question as a request for explaining that graph a bit better. Okay. Um, Antonio is asking actually, how do you see that there are more blue points than red points so that overall there is an improvement? Uh, okay, <laughs> so yeah, um, uh, points are, are transparent, uh, are translucent. So uh, there is a, a the, um, the color uh, over the bisectors is uh, much dense than the than under the bisectors and it's I don't, I don't know it seems quite uh, quite clear and it's uh, th this color is is much dense on, on the top but uh, any anyway uh, we have uh, the results here I mean we have the we have the data we know that 60 percent are above and only 30 percent are, are below in fact, I, I suggest that you reply to Antonio in writing because he's also suggesting alternative representations where you see accumulated uh, values. Let's move over to the question of Richard Aligier, who's saying that you have one requested flight level per OD. Uh, I'm not sure about that. You need to confirm it. Yeah, yeah. And I for can. the ODs where predict is much better. Uh, could it be explained by a too small number of flights? So do you have an idea of accuracy versus the number of flights per OD? A, about the, the first question, yes, we are just considering uh, one, one request of flight level, the, the, cruise, the cruise flight level, just one for, uh, for each uh, flight. And about the, the second, uh, this, this is an, an analysis we have done and we have seen, uh, we have analyzed our results um, and the correlation with the number of, of um, flights in, in those OD pairs is really, really low. I mean, not in, not in one, um, not remember exactly in, in which direction, but uh, the correlation is, it's really, really low. Which is quite surprising, you know, that you would expect that it's more difficult to predict when there are more requested flight levels in general. Yeah, yes, in principle, but also for the current system. Uh, for, for sure, if, if you're asking uh, if, uh, yeah, when, when there is a more re uh, requested flight level, is um, accuracy is, is lower, but yeah, uh, depends on the on on the focus the, the accuracy is lower but it's also lower for the for the current system so yeah uh, about the um, the increase in performance it's no no big difference for uh, for us okay um i leave you to ask the, uh, the question from thomas dubo in writing because this is about the specifics of the data set i don't think we should go into that now Okay. I go to the question of Luis Delgado, who is thanking you for the presentation, like many of the people that are put in, up forward the questions. And he's asking, did you consider cruise climb requests or is the algorithm predicting the first flight level? Okay, um, um, sorry, maybe I, I didn't explain quite well, but uh, this is focusing on the, on the pre-tactical phase. So it's... Uh, trying to predict um, the requested flight level that it's going to be on the on the flight that is going to be requested in the flight plan not in the uh, i mean additional climbing request i, I guess uh, luis is referring to um, uh, climbing requests within the um, within the operation phase for example to 
to avoid a, a convective event or, or something like, like that uh, are not considered. We are just focusing on the on the pretactical phase. I see other questions on the data sets. I was just wondering, um, for your enhanced model, you just tried it on a handful of CT pairs at the moment. Is that because there is a problem with the data preparation with obtaining the data, maybe the weather data, or why can't you do it immediately for all CT pairs? Uh, for now, uh, this, this model is still un, under development and the, the pre-process uh, for now, it takes a uh, long, long time to run. And as um, indeed we are talking about months of uh, pre processing uh, computing effort. So, uh, for, I mean, we could do it at, at some point just to evaluate the, the results. But as the, um, the model is not, uh, let's say, quite um, consolidated yet, uh, we have not seen the, the need to, to do it. But for sure, it's, it's our intention to, to do it in the future. And I would like to take the question from Ramon Dalmao as the last question. Do you think the scheduled duration of the flight could be an important feature? The flight level could possibly depend on how fast the airline wants to fly. Um, uh, th uh, thank you, thank you, Ramon. Indeed, I I think is it's a very good idea. We have not we have not considered, it, but, uh, but for sure it could be could be a um, very good hint for the uh, for the next uh, for the next work because yes, uh, for sure it could be a a, re a relevant a relevant feature. And with that, Manuel, I'd like to thank you again. Uh, thank, thank you, Mark. Thank you very much. So now we go over to Fatai. And Fat is a PhD student in uh, Singapore at the Nanyang Technological University. Where he works on computer vision and machine learning in joint lab with SAP. We know SAP, of course, from the remote power implementations. He will be talking about aircraft pushback prediction and turnaround monitoring. Fat, the floor is yours. Hello. Hello, everyone. My name is Tavin Phan from Nanjing Technological University. Today, I'm here on behalf of my team to present aircraft pushback prediction and turnaround monitoring by vision based object detection and activity identification. Aircraft turnaround is a process of preparing an aircraft for a flight. It starts once the aircraft reaches the, an airport and ends once the aircraft is ready to leave. The process involves many ground support equipment such as tow truck, cargo loader, cargo truck, fuel truck, as we can see from, from the picture on the right. It also consists of many activities written in airport planning manual as we can see from the picture. Aircraft turnaround plays a vital role in schedule planning. Therefore, turnaround monitoring can enable air traffic controllers to manage the process and forecast actual runway demand, or analyze activities to find an optimal process, which might reduce turnaround time. In this work, we create a framework which can detect relevant objects, identify activities, and predict pushback. After the introduction, I will describe the dataset. Next, the methodology will be mentioned, following by the results. The presentation will end with the conclusion. The videos are collected from the live camera at the boarding gate 3 at 
Tokachi Obihiro Airport in Japan. This is a small airport and from that gate, the camera can capture up to 4 flights per day. All videos are synchronized with the departure flights. Since this is a small airport, there are only two types of aircraft, which are B737 and B767. They are full HD videos with lengths of 40 minutes to 60 minutes. We collect 21 videos and divide 16 for training and 5 for testing. Videos are collected from different weather conditions and time of days, as shown in the picture on the right. Images are extracted every 5 seconds, creating 15,000 trending images and 2,500 testing images. They are manually labeled with a object, including aircraft, bridge, cargo truck, cargo loader, fuel truck, fuel pipe, tow bar, and tow truck. For aircraft, we also label aircraft types, which are B737 and B767. They are commonly 5 to 9 objects per image. In the videos, we also label 9 activities including aircraft arrival, bridge attachment, detachment, cargo loader attachment, detachment, fuel pipe drying in, out, tower truck attachment, and pushback. Compared to airport planning manual, there are some excluded activities because they are not contribute to the pushback prediction algorithm, such as load and unload compartment, or they cannot be captured by the camera like service galleys, service cabin, or they do not take place in the recorded videos like, like service vacuum toilets, service portable water. To my opinion, this is a very challenging data set because there are too many objects per image and heavily overlap, leading to occlusion, especially fuel pine and tow bar. Moreover, the intra variant is high. For example, different aircraft types use different ground support equipment sets, or cargo truck look differently when they do not have cargo, and the variations in time and weather condition. The next session is methodology. The diagram describes the proposed framework which monitors the aircraft turnaround process and predicts the pushback. From the videos, computer vision-based models are applied to detect aircraft, ground support equipment, and recognize aircraft time. Next, activities are detected. Finally, by combining with other data including turnaround manual from airport planning manual, uh, turnaround from history data, and the scheduled departure flight from the airport website, pushback time is predicted and updated in the real time. The flowchart shows the algorithm in detail. First, the detector repeatedly detects aircraft. If an aircraft is detected, the aircraft type is recognized and ground support equipment is also detected. The aircraft type is recognized once if the confidence is high or several times when the confidence is low. Then, based on aircraft type, we can retrieve the schedule. At the same time, Ground support equipment is repeatedly detected from the detected aircraft, ground support equipment, activity are identified. Next, the actual turnaround schedule is updated in real time. After that, the pushback time is predicted and revised until it occurs. The algorithm finally ends when actual pushback is de detected. To achieve high performance, we adapt the state-of-the-art convolutional neutron network architect and build two models, a recognizer for aircraft type recognition and a detector for object detection. The picture shows the recognizer which consists of five identical blobs by using depth-wide convolutional layers. The figure shows the detector which is a combination of the recognizer and feature pyramid network to locate object position and classes. Since we build our own network, we can customize the network for the trade-off between performance and running time. After objects are detected in each frame, they are tracked by mapping through the videos. Two factors are considered class and positions when mapping the object. Objects from consecutive frames are considered the same object if they are from the same category and their positions overlap each other. They are tracked through the whole video. Different colors represent different objects. 
Activity identification requires the relationship between the involved objects and the aircraft. We extract true information from the object positions, speed, and intersection over union of the involved objects and the aircraft. Because object boarding boxes are not stable over time, the speed and IOU are fluctuation. When the object stops from moving and the IOU increase, it's the attachment as so from the upper right track. When the object moves again and the overlap region reduces, it's the detachment as so on the lower right track. There are nine activities including aircraft arrival, bridge attachment, cargo loader attachment, fuel pipe attachment, tow truck attachment, fuel pipe at detachment, cargo loader detachment, Bridge detachment and finally pushback. Some activities can be shown at the duration as the left finger. Instead of forward and after, we use first and second cargo loader based on the time they detach. From the historical data, we establish the relationship between the time required to finish activities and the pushback time. We calculate the average time to complete each activity and the ratios of these average times to the actual pushback time as shown in the table. The predicted time is updated in real time as shown in the finger. First, it is initialized to the departure flight schedule on the airport website. It remains at this value until the first activity refueling finishes. Since the refueling activity ends early, the predicted pushback time drops significantly. After that, the predicted time slowly increases as the first cargo loader does not finish early at refueling date. After that, it slightly increases as the second cargo loader takes more time to complete than it should be. Then the predicted time suddenly drops because the bridge detached early. Finally, the predicted time increasing the actual pushback time may occur later than the estimated one. The next session is the results. Because there are only two classes, we use the lighted version of convolutional neural network, which achieves 100% accuracy. If there are more than two aircraft types, high detection accuracy is still achievable by using a more heavyweight version of the network. The figure shows the precision recall curves of the detection for different objects. A high recall detector aims to detect as many objects as possible, which helps reduce false negative. In contrast, the high precision detector aims to detect objects as precise as possible, which helps to reduce false positive. A, pre a precision recall curve indicates the trade-off between precision and recall, which is important to determining the detection threshold. Since different thresholds are associated with different precision and recall values, average precision is an important metric that calculates the average precision over all possible thresholds. In other words, average precision ranging from 0 to 1 indicates the detector performance regardless of the thresholds. The higher average precision, the better performance. The table shows the result of object detection achieving the high performance level with a mean average precision of 0 0.95. 0 .95. Large objects such as aircraft, bridge, tow truck, and fuel truck are detected with very high precision. Cargo loader and cargo truck are detected with lower precision than other large objects as they suffer from intravariant and overlapping. Due to their small size and heavy overlapping by larger objects, the fuel pie and tow bar have the lowest detection per precision. We divide nine activities into four groups, bridge, cargo loader, refueling, and others. The figure show the error between detected and the ground truth activities represented at the box plus. The errors are calculated by subtracting the predicted activity times from the ground truth. Therefore, negative errors indicate activities that are detected earlier than the ground truth, and positive errors indicate activities that are detected later. 
As can be seen, the median errors from the bridge calculator and other groups ranging from 0.5 to 2 seconds. As the fuel pipe has a low detection performance, refueling errors are not stable, resulting in small outliers. It results in a median error of the refueling time, only 0.5 seconds, which is still accurate compared to the overall turnaround duration. As there are only 5 testing videos, we display our prediction results. Beyond 5 videos, we can see that the departure flight schedule times are very different, ranging from 2,500 seconds to 3,900 seconds. Interesting, the difference between actual and scheduled pushback times seem to be variable, regardless of duration. For example, in the two figures, with actual times of approximately 2,700 seconds, the scheduled times range from 2,900 to 3,500 seconds, while in the two figures with the scheduled times of about 3,600 seconds, the actual times range from 2,700 to 3,500 seconds. Moreover, there are no standard process for aircraft turnaround. For example, in the upper right track, refueling time and the first cargo loader time are similar to each other, while in the lower left track, the bridge detached before the second cargo loader does. The framework can get more accuracy in predicting pushback compared to the scheduled time from the time of the first activity completion refueling in two of the five videos. It can be more accurately predict pushback from the time the second cargo loader detached from the one video and from the bridge detached in another video comparing to the scheduled time. It results in a more accurate pushback prediction in 4 out of the 5 videos. In conclusion, we have proposed a novel computer vision based framework that can monitor the aircraft turnaround process including object detection, activity identification, and pushback prediction. By using convolutional neutral network, aircraft tire recognition achieves 100% accuracy while object detection achieved 0.95 mean amplitude precision. For activity detection, the, mean, the median error is smaller than 6 seconds, which can be considered very low in the overall turnaround duration. Furthermore, the framework provided a more accurate pushback prediction than the airport schedule in 4 out of 5 cases. In the future, we intend to improve pushback prediction time by collecting more videos Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Fat. I hope you're online now. Yes, perfect. Thank you for the presentation. Let's move okay. to the questions. And the first one comes from Sonar Demirel. And he's asking if it is possible to focus on parts of the aircraft, would that speed up the processing and would that give you better results? Uh, I think you mean the part of the airport. Uh, I think it's possible, but because uh, uh, because right now we can focus on the whole uh, camera, so which means it depends on the airport. It, it depends on the camera location and the uh, airport layout who can crop it into the smaller picture. But uh, because right now, we because uh, the process turnaround, it can last like 40 minutes and we don't need to detect every frame. So because we only detect one frame per second, one frame per second. So which means we don't, right now, I don't, we don't consider about the speed because uh, one frame per second, we, we can reach that uh, speed. So, and actually, if we crop it, the result might be slightly better, but uh, I don't think it improves much, which means we can do it, but uh, it doesn't change the situation very much. While we are waiting for more questions, I have some from my side. Your data set is pretty small. Is that because the computations are very happy? 
Uh, my data set is very small because uh, I collect it from the internet. So, and uh, because uh, after collecting it, I had to, uh, I had to do something about the processing because when you label, you have to label every frame. It takes a lot of time. So it's just like the lack of uh, time, the lack of human resource. So I collect just 20, but I mean, in the future, I mean, right now I can collect more than that. It can go to 16 uh, or 60 or go to 100. But uh, in this case, no, yeah. Okay, I thought you had a collaboration with the airport and you got the videos from them. Okay, I understand. <laughs> In fact, in the early 2000s, there was a very similar project um, in Europe supported by, I don't think it was the, it was the commission, but I don't think it was in aerospace, I think it was in, in ICT, um, that also did object recognition around, around the aircraft, um, but you I don't mean, remember the actual techniques. You I will try to find it back in. You mean GAM, GAM TOS? they try to reconstruct uh, the sequence and in fact to estimate the pushback as well or the end the, when the plane would be ready um, by recognizing the sequence of objects that connected and disconnected from the aircraft so yeah, they, they I, had I a think... topography of, of the different uh, trucks and, and other things and and then they knew that uh, when the refueling truck hasn't arrived yet it's impossible to take to to push back. So whatever the pilot is saying at that moment should be ignored and the pushback time should be delayed. So I see another question coming in. And this is from Federica Leonetto and she's asking whether you could use transfer learning from other object recognition tasks. Would that help with the labeling? Uh, yes, it's possible, but because uh, uh, like I said, uh, uh, the, uh, the reason I do, I want to customize the model because I will have more uh, con control on this one. If if I do the transfer learning model, I only can cannot I, I only can do it and when the something happens, it's very difficult to train something. So that's that the reason I just customize my own small model, which can help me more control. Okay, I see a question coming in from Aditya Agao, I think um, you have answered it by saying that you took the videos from the internet and that you have only one camera position for this uh, for this camera. So yes. I think that explains it. So I'm waiting um, for more. Um, is there a way to artificially augment the training set? Uh... Because you have very few. Uh, actual occurrences of connecting uh, with certain equipment to the aircraft so can you can you duplicate um, images and use them can you use the images from different airports uh, to become more generic yeah but the, the thing is uh, because right now the detection and the, the detection book the, the detection performance is 95%. That is the reason I don't want to focus more on the object detection and I want to spend more time to focus on pushback prediction. And okay. yeah, so which means if I use different object from different airports, it will improve the object detection, but which right now I consider is still high. Actually, we can improve it into 90 six ninety eight or even ninety nine but uh, it doesn't change the situation much thank you fat i think this is all we have in terms of questions for the moment if there are more coming in you can reply them to them in writing later on thank you very much for your presentation yeah, thank you and then to all the participants, uh, to all the attendees, uh, this closes the session, but there are now some poster teasers that will be played uh, to you. Thank you for your attendance.